Previously, on Morph Girl. That's not a normal. Oh, my menu. Oh, okay. Um, uh, well, let's look at the notebook. Although I am a little curious about what films you have available. It's one of the notebooks Rebecca used to write her stories in. Oh, Lord. <clears throat> Come with us, page one. Typical. That's the best way Jane could have described the night. The moon was out, lighting the room in a dull, familiar glow. The air was still, peaceful. It was the perfect conditions for sleeping. Many would agree with her. Except the typical night had been disturbed in the almost atypical way Jane could have ever imagined. Jane squirmed in the corner of her bed. She pressed herself against the headboard and the wall, hugging her knees. Most of all, she was trembling. It wasn't every night that you wake up to find the expressionless child standing at the end of your bed, after all. The main question on Jane's mind was why? Why her? Why tonight? Why a child? Jane never thought of herself as particularly special. Surely this was only... Surely this only happened to those who warranted it. The weird and the wonderful. Not someone like her. Normal. That's the best way to describe Jane. Her name was Jane Audrey Phillips. Named after her two grandmothers, naturally. She had brown, shoulder-length hair. It was practical. Brown eyes, like her father. She wasn't particularly tall, neither particularly short. She did well at school. It led to a job that paid her bills. Neither liked her job, nor did she like it or dislike it. She had often thought she was a very neutral person. She didn't think much of anything. Not that she wasn't happy. She was in a calm, content way. She got on with things, much like herself. The day could also be described as normal. She woke three minutes before her alarm, as she usually did, ate a reluctant break breakfast, and headed to work. Work was average. Papers need filing, reports need writing, minimal conversations, and a sticky R key on her laptop. Returning home, leftovers for dinner, calling her mom. It was the routine she'd had for years. She went to bed on time and fell asleep in a timely manner. Nothing indicating anything odd should happen to her at all. And yet there, the child stood, at the end of her bed, in her room. It was a girl, wearing a white nightgown reminiscent of times far gone. It had long and wavering black hair. Its face was pale and its eyes dark. It made Jane uncomfortable to think of the strange specter as a girl, so she didn't. A young girl wouldn't find herself in a stranger's room in the, middle, in the middle of the night. This was not a young girl. That was all Jane could figure out. The woman had already tried asking it for information, but it wouldn't speak. It didn't react at all. It just stared at her. There was a chill on her spine, and she was desperately trying to ignore it, almost as if someone was slowly dragging an icicle up her back. She pressed herself harder against the wall. The sensation didn't cease. Though this was once the outcome Jane was hoping for, somehow it only terrified her more. She shrunk further into the bed. She was shivering. Come with us. Jane sucked her breath as the child spoke. Its voice was small and soft. It sounded like a little girl. It almost felt left Jane less terrified. Almost. 
but the eyes were so dark and the stare so intense. Jane desperately wanted to look away or close her eyes, but she daren't. Daren't? Daren't. Huh. The woman was terrified if she broke eye contact. The child would do something. She couldn't know that. The unease only grew. The child's face remained blank as it stared, though its head tilted to the side. It was almost cute. Only almost. Jane suddenly realized it was waiting for a response. The woman released the breath she didn't realize she was holding. Where? Her voice wobbled as she spoke. Her lip felt trembling. Her lip left trembling. The child shook its little head, its dark hair shuffling over its chest. Come with us. That's how a little girl sound. That's a spooky, scary story. Hmm. Perhaps some photos will help. Blank pages. Photos of me and Rebecca on the day that we moved in. We probably shouldn't have moved into a house with such an expensive rent, but... Rebecca wouldn't stop talking about kids. The Rebecca was set on living in the city, she also thought we'd need extra space. It is nice. I think we would have been good parents. Well, that was, uh, not a lot of actual photos. Alright, let's watch a movie. Check out that DVD collection. It's Rebecca's collection of horror movies. Man, this Rebecca sounds awesome. I love horror movies. Well, some of them. What? Well, watch one. Come on. 1979's Halloween, starring Michael Myers and... Well, not starring Michael Myers, but, you know... That was his debut as a slasher villain. Let me die. Let me die. The brain that wouldn't die. Oh, that wouldn't die. Good. I used to like this one. The film is about a mad scientist who manages to keep a woman's severed head alive for several days. Oh, God. The woman begs for him to let her die. That sounds disturbing. Why have I never seen it? Unsurprisingly, I no longer care for it. Yeah, I can see that. Can we watch it, though? Holy crap, I think we can actually watch the movie, but it's on mute. Thought maybe it was going to be like The Darkness, where you could actually watch the entire movie of, uh, of, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird while sitting on your duff next to your girlfriend. That's good stuff. And it looks like it would probably be open, um... Not open source, uh, public domain. That's what I'm thinking. Well, time to get home, or to work. I do not give myself that much time in the morning. I'm impressed. I'm usually like, oh crap, oh crap, get out the door, get out the door! Run! Finish report. Please finish report by the end of tomorrow. Maybe you'd be happier working somewhere else? Oh my god. Passive-aggressive comments certainly weren't uncommon around here. 
but I don't think I can put this report off any longer. I'll do the bulk of the work tomorrow. I can't do this right now. Yeah, maybe you'd be better working somewhere else. <laughs> maybe grief counseling? That's not normal. I used to take comfort in working here after Rebecca's death. I could pretend that she was at home waiting for me, just like before. A small part of me really believed that she would be. What was that? You have an alarm? Oh! Yeah, that's not normal. That thing you forgot about. Might not want to forget about it again. Yeah. Whatever was leaking has now completely filled the bath. Well, you know, just blood. Cursed blood. It looks like blood. Yeah. Good old ghost blood. It just means you're doomed. I need to call someone over to fix this. I don't want to. But I don't want to have to deal with any of this. I can't deal with this. Not today. Not this week. Not anymore. Uh, yeah. It's a... Uh, it's plumber clock. Oh, whoa. It really wants me to save before making a decision, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Call Plumber. I tell them about the bath, how it looks as though it's filled with blood. As expected, they don't believe me. They can't send anyone over until Monday. And I'm expected to live with a baffle of this for three days? Great. Well, time to get those sponges. Good old sponge bath. Does the body good. I don't think she liked my idea. Goodness. Oh, good. She put a towel on. I was worried she might catch a cold. Or that I might have to censor her hooch. Or her tatas. Rebecca always insisted on living in the city. That's expensive. Yeah, I kind of insist on living in the city, too. We could only afford a small house. It's overpriced, ugly, and the landlord is a bitch. Jeez. Were we to live anywhere else, this place would be a fraction of the rent we pay for it. I can get us somewhere bigger. Maybe then we could afford what Rebecca needs for recovery. I want to move. Making sure that Rebecca gets better as fast as possible is more important to me. But Rebecca insists that we stay. She says that the city is our home and that she doesn't want to leave our memories behind. It's a terrible place. We could save money.
she probably doesn't have the energy to even resist. Like, she's all, no, no, honestly, let's just stay. This is where we belong. And then we could just let that be. Like, things are fine in terms of finances um, but moving means it's an opportunity for Rebecca to improve what, huh. she wouldn't put up a fight this is actually tearing me up inside <laughs> oof okay um Fuck it. We're moving, Rebecca. Pack your shit. Or I'll, I'll pack it for you. You just rest. I, tr I tell Rebecca it isn't her decision to make. I'm the one working to pay our rent. She chose this house. It's my turn. Rebecca reluctantly agrees. She doesn't speak to me for hours. Until we get an urgent call about a test result, we drive to the hospital in silence. It's not good news. It's terminal. Rebecca is dying. Oh. She's here. Okay, girl, your alarm is the scariest thing in this game so far. Oh, did you sleep in? Get your baseball bat. I think I heard something break in the kitchen. Is somebody in there? I don't have time for any of this. I'm already late for work, and if I don't finish my report today, I could lose my job. Honestly, I'd rather be burgled. Should I go in? Check it out. Great use of the word burgled, by the way. There's nothing here. I was sure I heard something break in here, but nothing seems to be out of place. Huh. Maybe it was nothing? Alright, well. Back to work, I suppose. Don't want to get spooked by your refrigerator. Alana, I love you. Me and Rebecca used to write notes like this for each other. That's right, I called you Jennifer, but it's Alana. She used to leave them so that I could see them before I left for work. Aw, my girl does this too. It's wonderful. I've got one right here. It's on a uh, paper that looks like a little kitty cat. One says Halloween, and she even dated it. And the other one says, I love you, baby. Chew. Oh, oh, spooky. Freaking up, hold on. She used to leave them so that I would see them before I left for work. Is this some kind of joke? This isn't funny. Only someone who knows enough about me and my Rebecca would do something so personal. Even the handwriting looks like Rebecca's. Uh, I'm so late for work. Well, that was cruel. Time to make tracks, girl. 
We got reports to write. So, uh, did you finish those TPS reports or what? Did you get the memo? Just gonna use every office space meme I'm, I remember. Don't jump to any conclusions now. Oh no, it's HR department. Hello? Nothing. Nobody seems to be there. I guess I'll hang up? Hmm. Good to see it working. Oh, Christ. That's my phone number. Is someone really inside my house? Are they really calling me from my own home? Sure, this has to be some kind of joke. Answer it. The call's coming from inside the house. Oh, great. I shouldn't answer it. They've broken into my home. I still really need to finish the, this report by the end of the day. But then maybe I should answer it? I have no idea who this person is or why they might be calling. Who knows who it could be? Who knows who it could be? Answer! What's a quick little phone call, right? It's not gonna set you back that far. Can you, would you mind pulling the receiver away from, or the, the mouthpiece away from your mouth? Because you are, you are gargling that phone right now. Heavy breathing. Strained, raspy, and painful breathing from what sounds like a woman. It's absolutely horrifying. It sounds so painfully familiar. So reminiscent of Rebecca's breathing over the last couple of months of her life. Just as the cancer had begun to spread to her lungs. Who could be doing this? Why are they doing this? Get home, girl. She's still wearing that towel? Good girl. Stay calm. Whoever's doing this is likely responsible for everything that's happened. This is just some terrible joke. I'll just call the police, change the locks, and forget that any of this ever happened. Everything will be fine. Normal. That normal story was based on you, wasn't it? But kick that door down! Eyes up, lady. You know someone's been in your home. That's a spooky. It's the ring girl. The figure that stands in the kitchen. Despite everything, it felt like Rebecca. She also used to stand in a creepy fashion with her hair, hair draped over her face. That was what I liked about her. It isn't Rebecca. Maybe if I hid here long enough, it will leave of its own accord. If I stay here until it does... Rebecca has been hospital-ridden for a week now. She's on life support. She could no longer move or speak. She could barely breathe. We had to take her. She will never leave. 
The doctors say that she only has days left. She's going to die. You stay by her side to the very end. Rebecca is in horrific pain. She frequently gestures to her life support. I know what she wants. make a decision like this. Oh. Hmm. I don't. I don't, I don't like this decision. Too personal to me. I've had to make this kind of choice. time. Her choice. I pull Rebecca's life support. Rebecca flatlines less than a minute later. It's what she wanted, but it isn't what I wanted. If I were to refuse, she would only spend her remaining days in agony, waiting to die. But there was so much I wanted to say, so much I should have said to her. Her friends, her family, they never even got to say goodbye. I took that from them. I panicked, and now she's gone. You killed her. But Are you still hiding in the closet? Did you lock the door? Oh, this is where we started. Is this the movie? Yeah, look at the TV. What's up with this? Attack of the Giant Leeches. This is one of Rebecca's old movies. She used to make fun of me for liking it. She said it was a really bad film. It is. <laughs> Check it out. Attack of the Giant Leeches. I'm glad this one has sound. Starring Ken Clark, Yvette Vickers, Jan Shepard, and Michael Emmett. With these other dopes. Original story and screenplay by this guy over here. Dramatic! Back when we put credits at the front of the movie. I mean, you couldn't walk out on it, but you could arrive late and it would be just fine. Alright, that's quite enough of that. Consult these bills. Overdue rent. Rebecca was always too focused on her writing to consider employment, but we managed. Until I was demoted. Jeez. Good thing everything you need is in your bedroom. Photos, television, bills. Um, I guess you have a bathroom? It's a photograph of me and Rebecca at a party just a few days after we met. I was a loner at university. I spent a lot of nights at the student bar alone, hoping I wouldn't be. 
One night it wasn't. I met Rebecca. You met Rebecca at a bar? Classy lady! She very quickly introduced me to her circle of friends and invited me to a party later that week. We kissed for the first time that night. Aww. And then we moved into each other. Uh, uh, with each other. Wow, that's a Freudian slip if ever there was one. Look at the table. Oh. What's, uh, what's up with this trinket? I honestly figured it would be the comb. It's a crystal graduation bear I gave to Rebecca when she graduated. Where she had encouraged me to become more confident and outgoing, I'd pushed and tutored Rebecca to finish university. I was so proud of her that day. And so very grateful. Well, you mentored her, in a way. Let's check out this diary. That date's relevant. Entry number one. She said no. My dreams might as well just stay in my sleep. Who gives a shit? Clearly not me. I'll just stay in the hospital and be miserable for the rest of my short fucking life. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. What, what is this, um, about moving out? Entry number two. So I tentatively ask Elena to read my stories. Well, not all of them. Just the ones I wanted to publish. I won't be able to publish them now. Oh well. She's the biggest critic I have anyways. She said she would. It makes me nervous. I don't know why. When we were studying, she used to read what I wrote. But that was for school. After I graduated and decided to write full time, she wasn't interested. Started off not having time nor interest in it. Ended up shouting at me every time I mentioned it. Clearly, dying is the exception. I've always wondered what she'll say. She'll never find out. She said she was too busy. It was just Five short stories. She could have read it in the evenings she didn't spend with me. I know she hates seeing me like this, but she won't be seeing me soon enough. It would be nice if she'd just think about me. Entry number three. Wow, that was the first night out I've had in so long. The usual gang asked me to go out with them for the first time in a while. Since I told them I was on the treatment, really. They were a bit sympathetic and annoying at first, but once the alcohol kicked in, things went back to normal. I haven't been drunk in so long, either. It was great. I could forget about all this shit and just laugh and dance and do whatever the hell I want. I got tired and a bit wheezy, and the treatment really does kick you in the balls. But I had a good time. I refused to let it bring me down. Not even for one second. Elena was worried. I, I know she was. But I appreciate her for... for accepting my choice. She doesn't always do that anymore. I think they'll ask me to join them more often now. They were so scared of it before. I think they were terrified that they would break me. But they can all... But they can try all they like. Life can't get rid of me that easy. That sounds like a challenge. Oh boy, entry number four. Things were great, just great. Until she said she wanted to move house. Elena did her Elena thing and decided she wanted to move. So of course we have to do it. She hated her home from the beginning. She wanted to live in the country. A, a somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Somewhere boring. Just so that we could have a better place with our budget. I don't care about living in a fancy house. Fancy houses don't make good homes. Back then, she knew how to compromise, so we got this place on the outskirts of the city. 
I had a vision for it the moment we stepped in. The landlord is a bitch, but she's just a stepping stone. We'd be out of there as soon as Atlanta got a promotion, or I could publish my book. It wouldn't be a hassle when we moved because we already live in the city of our dreams. We're already part of the community and know our way around. We just get to live in a slightly fancier place. Alright, fancy houses can be homes if you earn them, I'll admit. But living in a shitty place neither of us wants just so we can have a fancy shit is cheating. I hate it. I don't want to live in the middle of nowhere so I can have a hospital bed in the living room and just a stupid accessible old person bathroom. That would mean I won't be able to get away with from everything even when I go home. But Elena wants to get her away with my life once again. So I'll just live in the middle of nowhere in a shitty unfamiliar house that looks like a hospital. It's all in my best interest, of course. So, after all that, shitty day, big argument, stony silence, long as a fuck car drive, all to be told I'm dying. Elena won't even look at me. I don't want to look at me. What the fuck do I even do? You murdered me. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? What? Whoa. You just... That was casual. Just, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I'll just put that down. It's fine. I guess we did, actually, though. It's the engagement ring I used to propose a few weeks after we'd move in together. It was a very cheap ring. We didn't have a lot of money at the time. I was so worried she wouldn't like it. I don't think she did, though she would have never admitted it to me. What's this rose? No, oh, it's a very dry rose, isn't it? A preserved rose. Rebecca gave this to me on the last Valenti Valentine's Day we ever spent together. She said it would last forever so that she can make up for all the Valentine's Day she was going to miss. It is wilting. Well, that's terrible. <sighs> well, that is pretty awful. Let's check out the notebook. Notes and nice things. It's one of Rebecca's old notebooks. She used to write her short stories in these. Oh goodness, it continues. Come with us, page five. Afraid, it was the only emotion Jane could put into words. The child never left. She stayed by Jane's side until the terrified woman left for work. Acting normal seemed quite the task for her. Jane returned home, wishing the child would be gone. Alas, she was sat quiet as ever in the kitchen table. Turning her head to Jane as she entered the room, Jane spent the day trying to ask the child questions about her name. <laughs> I have the hiccups. Where she came from who she was. The woman was met with silence each time. She gave up, continued as normal. If she ignored her, she might go away. But wherever Jane went, the child followed. Wherever Jane sat, the child sat against her. Ignorance wasn't an option. When night fell, the child followed her closely through her routine. Silent and expressionless, the child hesitated as Jane hesitantly climbed the bed, the child stood where she had done the night before and pointed, knitting her brow once again. Carefully, Jane offered the other side of her bed to her. The child did as she wanted and laid next to the trembling woman. Jane pressed her back against the wall as the child stared at her from the pillow beside her own. They stared at each other for a while before the child sighed that soft little sigh again and closed her eyes. 
Jane didn't dare move her gaze for what felt like hours. Though the child didn't move, her eyes remained closed, and she was softly breathing. Jane knew the child didn't eat, nor did it use the bathroom. There was very little reason to believe the child needed to sleep. Paranoid, the woman remained obstinately awake. Jane opened her eyes quickly, breathing rapidly as she realized she had fallen asleep. The child's eyes were open, though her position had not moved. It scared Jane to wake to those dark eyes, staring at her once again. The room was still dark. Jane desperately tried to regulate her breathing. As her eyes swept the room, she let out a small shriek. Jane scrambled to sit up in her bed, pressing her back hard against the wall. There was a second child stood at the front of her bed, staring at her with the exact same dark eyes. This child appeared to be a boy. The hair was shorter, but just as dark and flat. It partially obscured his eyes. The child was also wearing a nightgown. They appeared to be a matching set, though they didn't acknowledge each other. Only her. Jane very briefly tore her eyes away from the second child to look at the first. She was sitting now, too, but her gaze was fixed on Jane. Come with us, they spoke in unison. The woman sucked in her breath and fought the urge to cry. She shook her head a little in response. Jane then felt the first child sit closer, her hair brushing against her arm. Jane looked down. The girl was staring right at her, leaning her head against the shoulder once again. Come with us, and she spoke, her voice soft. Somehow it calmed her. She felt herself able to breathe again. Where, she asked the girl. The child simply sighed and looked ahead, resting on her shoulder. Jane moved her gaze to the boy. He was staring at her. Where, she asked again. In response, he moved to where the girl had stood the night before. Jane blinked at him and looked down to the bed. You want to get in the bed too? She asked fearfully. He did so, leaning against the girl, looking ahead as he did. All Jane could do was focus on, pr on taking breaths, in and out. They sat like that until morning. Rebecca was talented. I, uh, I'm intrigued. You should have read this much sooner. Um, have I looked at everything? I suspect that I have. Well, I think it's time to get out of here. She's still out there. She liked the child in her stories. You're brave. I'd have left that on. waiting for me. Bitch, that's my bath towel. What does it want? It hasn't done anything to me yet. It feels like Rebecca. What if it's okay? Maybe I should approach it. Yeah, that's probably okay. You know, normal. But then maybe I should grab a kitchen from the but then maybe I should grab a kitchen from the knife first. <laughs> yeah, the other way around. Sorry. Just to be safe. I don't think that's going to really matter. Let's go say hi. Maybe have a seat, pour a glass of wine, cup of instant coffee, gross.
since when have long-haired women like this ever been a terrible thing? Oh. Okay. Um. Yeah, sure. Take a leap of faith. Why the hell not? I accept your offer, Rebecca. It wasn't Rebecca. Aside from some inconsistencies in both memory and personality, its actions were almost identical to hers. That was real enough for me. Wait, what? Wait, what? Are... Are... Did you just sleep with zombie Rebecca? I moved to an affordable country home, just like I wanted. It was a nice place, somewhere comfortable where I could hide, quote, Rebecca from the world. They barely spoke, and it never felt human to me, but I would go on and pretend that things were just as they were prior to Rebecca's death for almost 11 months. Eat your soul one day. Oh yeah, you're super soul eaten. My life didn't really change after mm, Rebecca came back. I got another office job. At first, it was refreshing to be around coworkers that didn't resent me, but my life was too secretive to ever make friends. It may have been the same old routine, but now it wasn't alone. I'm a little perplexed, confused, thrown for a loop. Like, who, uh, since when does the scary ghost girl get befriended and turned into the girlfriend? What a twist! Does she also have front hair in front of her? Is she just like that all the way around? I often felt guilty, but never guilty enough to return to my grief. abnormal. Perhaps this was. Jane realized people could probably see her. They were in the open field and the... Jane realized people could probably see her. They were in the open field that was at the back of her house. They walked in a line, children in front, herself following, pulling out her raw hands. They led her through the field. She didn't know how long they would they had been walking for. Whenever she faltered or hesitated without looking, they knew. Come with us, they would encourage her, so she continued. Until they came to the lake. She stopped in her tracks. No, I'm not I can't. They all stood in a line and turned to her. They faced her with blank expressions. They didn't speak as she had expected them to. They waited. Jane's gaze darted between them and her burned hands. The pain was making her restless. She shifted her weight from leg to leg, rocking from side to side. They waited. I can't come with you, she spoke quietly, quickly. They walked towards her. 
Jane felt her heart quicken. The little boy took her hand, as did the girl. The other boy took hold of her dress. They looked at her. The touch of their icy hands felt good against her burning skin. The three of them blinked at her expectantly, though she didn't speak, though they didn't speak. She took one step forward. They all stepped with her. She inhaled and took another step. Slowly, they made their way towards the edge of the water. In there, she spoke softly. Jane can feel herself shaking again. Come with us, they responded, stepping ahead of her into the water. Jane trailed her fingers along the surface of the water just as the children disappeared from view. She smiled. She followed. It was shallow at first. She stepped down a little deeper. The water was soft and soothing on her burning skin. It was cool, but not uncomfortable. It felt nice. Jane found herself welcoming it. Atypical. Finding yourself following three identical-looking expressionless children who showed up in the middle of the night into a lake was odd. By anyone's standards. Especially Jane's. She expected no one would believe her. Not that anyone would know. Jane had lived her life by the book, following all of the rules. Such abnormality happening in the most normal person she knew, herself. Jane trailed her fisher. Jane trailed her fingers along the surface of the water just as the children disappeared from view. She smiled. So Jane's super dead. If you're not Rebecca, you Jane. I died 11 months later. Oh, an anniversary death. Whatever it was, our relationship was symbi symbiotic, imitating loved ones to feed off of the willing host to survive. As it turns out, there's only so long a person can last in such a relationship. I don't know if it was worth it, but it was easy. Well, shit. This is but one of six ends to Atlanta's story. Your choices incur real consequences, significantly altering your conclusion to Morph Girl. Hmm. Cool. So that was Morph Girl. Kind of a short little thing. I picked it up from Steam for a couple of bucks while it was on sale. Um... Do I recommend it? Eh, why the hell not? I think I think they uh, the people who made this game, the the actress that played um, Alana, did a pretty good job. They knew not to introduce any voice acting, which is seems to be the death knell of FMV, and just kept it to text, so your inner dialogue would play with it. I, perfect. Honestly, I think they did a, a great job, and there's plenty of options. Oh, what's this? Oh, okay. Uh, that's, that is the get fucked cr uh, button on account of I don't get to use it. <laughs> oh, cool. Public domain movies. Sweet. Yeah, uh, if you like what you sold here, what you sold. Give it a shot. I am willing to bet you can very well sit and watch these public domain movies as well. Uh, although I wonder if you can only see a certain amount. Keep file size down, you know? And that was Morph Girl. Pretty decent, I'd say. For a couple of bucks, go for it. I want to thank you very much for watching, and until next time, take care.